One more question here. And uh, Janet uh, from Univision. Thank you, Mr. President. We too have been reporting at the border, and just like Cecilia, we ran into a pair of siblings who came in on Monday, were detained by CBP, had the phone number for their mother who lives in the U.S. We have contacted the mother. That's the only way they know her kids are here because CBP today, Thursday, has not contacted that mother. So when can we expect your promise of things getting better with contacting and expediting? Well, they're the already getting better, but they're going to get real. They're going to get a whole hell of a lot better real quick, or you're going to hear some people leaving. Okay? We can get this done. We're going to get it done. I had a long meeting with the entire team and several cabinet level officers the other night. We're going to be moving within the next, uh, within the next week, over 100,000, I mean, 1,000 a, a, a people out of uh, the Border Patrol into safe, secure beds and, and facilities. We're going to significantly ramp up. We're already out there contacting everyone from getting some of the employees at HHS. There's a lot of them doing other things and move them into making those calls. We're in the, we're in the process of rearranging and providing for the personnel needed to get that done. But I admire the fact that you were down there. You're making the calls yourself. It's real. The next thing that has to happen, though, as you well know, has to happen. There have to be some certitude that this is the actually mom, dad, or whomever. And there's ways to do that. There's ways to do that, a little bit like determining whether or not you got the right code for your credit card, uh, you know. What, 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 what was your dog's name kind of thing? I'm being a bit facetious, but not really. And also seeking harder data from DNA to, uh, to birth certificates, which takes longer. So I want to do this as, as quickly as humanly possible and as safely as possible. Well, no, treating the root causes in Latin America doesn't change things overnight. How do you realistically and physically keep these families from coming to the U.S. when things will not get better in their countries right away? Well, I, I, I can't guarantee that, but I know, you know, that old thing, the journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. You know as well as I do. You cover it. You have serious... It's not like somebody sitting in a hand you table in Guatemala, I mean, in, uh, in, uh, in somewhere in Mexico or in, in Guadalupe saying, I got a great idea. Let's sell everything we have. Give it to a coyote. Have them take our kids across the border into a desert where they don't speak the language. Won't that be fun? Let's go. That's not how it happens. People don't want to leave. When my great-grandfather got in a coffin ship in the Irish Sea, expectation was, was he, was he going to live long enough on that ship to get to the United States of America? But they left because of what the Brits had been doing. They were in real, real trouble. They didn't want to leave, but they had no choice. So you got — we can't — I can't guarantee we're going to solve everything, but I can guarantee we can make everything better. We can make it better. We can change the lives of so many people. And the other thing I want to point out to you, and I hope you point out, I realize it's much more heart-wrenching, and it is, to deal with a five and six and seven-year-old. But you went down there and you saw the vast majority of these children, 70 percent are 16 years old, 17 years old, and mostly males. Doesn't make it, doesn't make it good, bad, or indifferent, but the idea that we have tens of thousands of kids in these god-awful facilities that are really little babies crying all night. There's some. That's true. That's what we got to act. And yesterday, I asked my team, both the director of the two agencies as well as others, I asked them what would they, in fact, and I asked their opinion because they're the experts, but I said, focus on the most vulnerable immediately. But there's no reason why in the next month, as people cross the border, that phone call can't be made in the first 48 hours and begin. If I may ask one last question, have you had any talks with Senate Republicans who are threatening this administration with not considering the immigration legislation that was passed in the House until the situation at the border has been resolved? No, because I know they have to posture for a while. They sort of got to get out of their system. <laughs> Um, this is a uh, 
Um, but I, I'm ready to work with any Republican who wants to help solve the problem or make, make the situation better. But folks, I'm going. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Thank you.